In this video, I want to take one final look at our indexing plate and look for anything we may have missed. So I have the drawing open. We want to work our way around and look for any items that stand out. So as we walk around, there should be two things we notice. The distance here from the center of the dowel down to the center of this hole, or from this hole up to the dowel, doesn't have a tolerance yet, and it should. And the distance between dowels doesn't have a tolerance yet, and it should. The other thing you probably notice is when we go to assemble the pin in this hole, it would assemble easier if there were a countersink here. So we need to add a countersink. So I'm going to control tab back to that part. I'm going to select this edge. And I'm going to tell it I want to make a chamfer. 50 thou will work and I'll say OK. That looks good. I'll rebuild and save the part. Then I'll go back to my drawing. And I need to add that countersink to the whole callout. So I'll just select this whole callout. Click down here. I'm going to scroll down and tell it I want countersink for diameter. 0 0.60 will be lots by 90 degrees. And say OK. So I've updated that whole call out. The arrow should point here, but I probably won't be able to move it, so I'll just accept that little error. As we continue our examination of the drawing, we want to ask ourselves, what about the number of decimal places? Will our general tolerance table work based on what we want, or do we need specific tolerances like we have here? So for the 0.63 radius, that's more than sufficient. For these two tapped holes, they're to push it off. So two decimal places is more than sufficient. We could even change this to one decimal place for what it is. The overall length of three and a half again is nothing critical. Or is the half inch thickness. Then when we come to the side view, is this half inch dimension important? It's not. Nor is this where this radius starts or this total part length as we come around this radius. So I'm going to select all three of these dimensions and I don't need three decimal place accuracy. I'm going to change it to two. That'll be more than sufficient as we zoom in on our general tolerance table. Two is plus or minus 10 thou. That's fine. So I'm going to say OK and I want to check for missing dimensions. So I take a good look and I realize, well, wait a minute. I don't know that these holes are on the center of this feature. Visually, it looks that way. But I haven't done anything to tell the manufacturer it is. So I'm going to come back here to the Smart Dimension. I'm going to choose this surface and this hole. And I'll add this dimension. And again, this isn't critical. So I'm going to set its accuracy to two decimal places and say OK. Our hole positions do have the true position tolerance here. So they're good. And again, we should take one more look around the drawing and look for any missing features or dimensions. If we can't find any, we should still come back to it another day, if possible, before releasing it to the shop floor and just double check. But for now, everything looks good. And the last thing we need to do, again, is calculate what tolerance we can have here and here and add that to our part drawing, as well as determine a material. So in the next video, we'll look at how to calculate these critical tolerances. And then later, we'll look at materials.